Bayam. Okay, yes. Good chaydush, everybody. A good chaydush, a good yar. A freilich chaydush. A chaydush of Nitzachin and a chaydush of Geula. So we'll begin. Be'ezer Hashem. I'm excited. Today we begin a new Maimer. We finished uh, last week the Maimer of Purim Tavshin Tesvav. Reish is Goyim Amalek Vacharisa Yadei Oivet. A Maimer dedicated to uh, the theme of Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Chaya, and Yechida. And the forces inside of us of Amalek and how we combat Amalek. <coughs> And actually, that Maimer is based on the last Maimodim of the Rebbe Rashab that he said, the time of Purim, Tafresh Pei, 1920, a few weeks before his Estalkus on Beis Nissen, Tafresh Pei. So today we begin a new Maimer, if you see in the headline, Purim Tafshin Tezayin. Actually, one year later, Purim 1956, that the Rebbe said at the Fabrengen of Purim. And it begins with a Maimer Chazal, a very fascinating Medrash, that Purim is the one holiday that will not be obliterated after Mashiach comes, as we will see. That's how it begins. I want to thank Reb Nechemia Kaplan for the copies, for the beautiful copies, as always. Today's class is dedicated gratefully by Freydel and Shimi Traurig of Montreal in appreciation for all the transformational learning. Thank you very, very much. And it's also dedicated in the merit of Reb Nechem Yezeev Ben Chaya Lifsha, whose 50th birthday is today. And he's actually with us today. Mazel Tov. Yoivol Shana, Ashnasa Yoivol Shana, Lariches Yamim Rishanim Tevis. And may your achievements the next 50 years so be, be so beautiful that they eclipse even the first 50 years. <laughs> he says that will be easy. I like that. <laughs> okay. So you have here the source sheets. It's on the, we posted also on the website, the yeshiva.net, so you could see the source sheets. To understand the Maime Chazal. Where is this Maime Chazal from? As he says in footnote one, it's in Medrash Mishle, Perik Tes, Parsha Tes. And Yalkut Shemoyni Mishle. It's two Medrashim. One is known as Medrash Mishle. And one is Yalkut Shemoyni. Also in Mishle. It's interesting. It's not a Megillah Sester. It's in Mishle. And over there the Medrash says the following. Kol ha-mayadim asidin libatel v'mei ha-purim enim p'telem lo'elam. All the mayadim, which means all the festivals, all the holidays, in the future they're going to be nullified. But the days of Purim, in Purim, Shushim Purim, the Medrash says, They're never going to become bottle. They will never be obliterated. What's the source for this? Shanemar, the Pasuk says, in Megillus Esther, which we read on Purim, what does the Pasuk say? The days of Purim, they will never pass. They will never be removed. They will never pass, pass from the Jewish people, from the Yehudim. And the memory of Purim will never be eliminated, will never be removed. Yosef is like removed, gathered away, Mizarim from their children. So because the Medrash says from this Pasuk we see, it says, La Yosef Mizarim, it's never going to go away. We may have put him La there's no limitation of time. So that's why even La Asid Love, even in the future, when the other holidays are going to be bottled, the Medrash says, put him never, put him will always remain and retain its relevance and potency and existence. This, right away, is a big question. What's the question? One of the principles of Torah is one of the, the Rambam puts it as one of the 13 principles of faith. You say, those who say the Ani Maimon say it every day. That the Torah is not going to be changed. One of the main reasons that Jews rejected other attempts at deviating from Judaism, Right? One of the big things, a lot of people don't realize this, they, 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 they discuss secondary things. One of the big things is, as the Rambam, Rambam in Hilchas Yisraeli Atayri has a few chapters dedicated to this. 
chapter, chapter 7, 8, 9, 10. The last chapters of Hilchis Yisaydi are very fundamental in Ashkafa. So the Rambam says there, the Rambam explains that uh, if a Navi comes, a Navi stands up and he could do a thousand million, he could do a hundred million miracles. He could, split, he could split seas and bring plagues and whatever he wants. He's somehow. And he could uh, walk through water, everything. Yeah. Give you the second cheek to slap on, to give him a slap on the second cheek, which is sometimes a bigger miracle than splitting the sea. <laughs> whatever he does. And, and tack a big, not, we're not talking about small stuff, you know, a little thing, a puppet show. We're talking real miracles. And then he says something. He says, uh, God doesn't want you to put on tefillin anymore. Or Shabbos is supposed to be on Monday. Or Pesach should begin, uh, you know, lag lag boime. A little change. That, right away, you know that he's a Navi Sheker. Right away. Because if he makes one change in Allah, there is an exception. A Navi, what's called Hiras Shah. Another Navi could say that for this time, there's a certain mitzvah that Hashem gave us, or a certain Aveda was suspended, like Eliyahu Navi, offered a carbon outside of the base of Mikdash, right? On Mount Carmel, Hara Carmel, Eliyahu Navi. But that was a Rasha. If Eliyahu Navi would say there's a new base of Mikdash somewhere else, uh, on Muncy, we're building a base of Mikdash. Or any halacha, even a small little halacha, yeah? That right away disqualifies him as a Navi. Why? Because the basis of all authenticity, is Maimed Har Sinai, because everybody saw it. There was nothing as powerful as Maimed Har Sinai. Maimed Har Sinai authenticated the Nevu of Moshe Rabbeinu. The moment, so that's where a Navi is getting his power. Because Moshe said, if he has the criteria of a prophet, which you have to have criteria, a love to Shmo. The moment he's, con- and Moshe Rabbeinu said, that HaTayr HaZais, right? HaNistoris L'Hashem HaLakein of HaNigleis, Lonu L'Vaneinu Ad Oilam, Lazarus is called Tivir HaTayr HaZais. At the end of his life, Moshe said, that the Tayr is forever. The moment you're contradicting the Navu of Moshe Rabbeinu, you just eliminated the entire power of why anyone should listen to you. And this has maintained the integrity of, of Judaism and Jewish people. I think this halacha really maintained the integrity. Because when the Christian, all the, all the great, all great movements that came, the moment there's a deviation of halacha, yeah, it was very clear when uh, he had Shabsi Tzvi Lamashal, right? The moment he ate on Tisha B'av Lamashal. Okay, Tisha B'av is not for Moshe Rabbeinu. But the moment he started to play with halacha, a lot of people woke up, not everybody. He got up, he said, Baruch Atah Hashem Alekeinu Melech Ha'elam, Matir Isurim. <laughs> matir Isurim, instead of Matir Asurim. He changed the bracha. He could be Matir Isurim, and Mashiach Hazi, he could change everything. The moment you do that, you disqualify yourself. I'll call upon him, so here's a major shaila. So this is a klal and taita. There's a mitzvah and taita Pesach, a mitzvah and taita Shavuos, a mitzvah and taita Sukkos. What do you mean, kol amayad and p'tayla? This is one of the Yisaitis. By the way, there was a great Jewish philosopher who argued with the Rambam. The Sefer Ikrim, Rabbi Yosef Alboy, he lived in the 15th century, he argued with the Rambam. He didn't like the fact that the Rambam made 13 principles of faith. He made three principles of faith. Rabbi Yosef Alboy. Malchius, Zechroinus, and Shoifrus. And he said that's why the Chazal instituted that Rosh Hashanah's prayers, Rish Musaf of Rosh Hashanah's Malchius, Zechroinus, and Shoifrus. Malchus is that the world has a creator. The world has a creator. There's a melech. We, we're not random mistakes. There's purpose, there's meaning, there's creation. There's Zechroinus and Shoifris. Shoifris is Matan Torah. It's not just the world has a creator. Our creator articulated a plan. And then there's Zechroinus. The creator actually remembers and cares about what you do. So those are the three principles. He argues with the 13 principles of faith. He also says, if, God, if Hashem wants to make a new Torah, how do you know he can't make a new Torah? Maybe he'll want to make a new, let's say he'll, make, he'll reveal himself again like Maimed Arsene. It's an interesting, but the Rambam disagrees. And most of the poets can follow the Rambam. The Torah is like, the Rambam has to have a separate Shia, what's the Torah and Amachlaikas? But it's just, uh, <coughs> but that's the Yisrael, the Torah won't be, so here we have a big problem. How can the Medrash say, as a called Plutik, all the Mayadim, it's all gone, besides Purim. And Purim is actually not even in, in, from Tarius Moshe Rabbein, right? Purim was added much later. Purim was added after the Churban Bayis Rishon, before the building of Bayis Shani. So Purim was added around 500 years after Moshe Rabbein, because the Jewish people went into Eretz Yisrael. 400 and, uh, 440 years later, Shlomo built the first Beis HaMikdash. It stood for 400 
and 10 years. So it's almost 1,000 years. I said 400. It's almost, a th it's almost uh, uh, 440 and then another 410. So you're talking about 850, 850. And you had 70 years of Golas Bava, right? So it's more than 900 years from Moshe Rabbeinu till the time of Purim. And yet you say, all the Yom Tovim from Moshe, it's all going to be bottle. That's what the Rebbe asks. Like he says in three, it's the ninth principle of the thirteen principles in Pirisha Mishnah Yisla Rambam. How do you do a Pirisha? So one of the answers, one of the explanations in this, and this comes from, as he says, Torah Er Megillah Sester. So the, the Balatanya explains it, the explains this. So the Pshat is different. The Trib explains like this. The Gemara says in Meseches Chulun Daf Samach, when the moon came to uh, complain about her sta status, that she and the son both are the same size, you can't have two kings wearing the same crown. So Hashem told the moon, go diminish yourself. So the moon started to complain, just because I'm sensitive, <laughs> right? Just because I'm a sensitive guy and I, I'm, I'm, I'm protesting the problem and I'm sensitive to it, that's why I should diminish myself, right? And the bully is going to get away with it, the big guy. So Hashem starts telling the moon all the great things that the moon is going to have. One of the things is, the Jews are going to have their calendar based on you and Yaakov and David will be called Koton and... And you're going to have all these stars that show up at night. And you're going to rule by day and by night. Sometimes you could see the sun, by, the moon by day. So when he says you're going to rule by day, he said, If you light a candle in the midday, you know, light a candle 12 o'clock, a beautiful day, the sun is shining over your head, light a candle. Shraga, a candle, in the, day, in the light of day, tiara is light. The light of day, mayahani. What benefit is there? It's worthless. So it's not that the candle is not burning. It's not that somebody extinguished the candle. It just means in the presence of such luminescence, of such brightness, the candle doesn't occupy significant space. Let's put it this way. It's not making a significant contribution or even an insignificant contribution. This behooves me to tell the Chelem joke, right? I've probably shared it in the past. I'm sure I did. There was a debate in Chelem. What's more important, the sun or the moon? As usual, the debates were heated and they went in for seven days and seven nights. And what happened? On the seven days, seven nights, the greatest Chacham of Chalem said he has an answer. And the answer is that the moon is much more important and prestigious than the sun. Why? Because the sun shines when you don't need it. It's daytime. Who needs light during daytime? The moon makes a contribution. It's pitch dark outside and the moon casts some light. So this was the conclusion of Chalem. So that's the classical case, right? Shraga betira. So the origin of it is shraga betira, mayani. Who needs the candle during the daytime? In Chelem, they confuse the candle with the sun. They did. <laughs> but who needs the candle betira, shraga betira? In other words, some things in life, it's not that there's no light. If it's pitch dark, the candle saves the day. I should say saves the night. <laughs> Right, you're in a blackout. You have nothing. The candle is everything. Right, that's the takon of Shabbos. Neir Shabbos. The Chachamim didn't want Jews should sit in the darkness by Suda Shabbos. We don't appreciate so much the mitzvah of Shabbos candles because uh, you know you have Thomas Edison to thank for that. But it all, I remember I was once in the country for Shabbos uh, in the Catskills, and there was a blackout right before Shabbos, like uh, after after Shkia, there was a blackout. But it, it was a blackout in the Catskills. Not, to, not today's Catskills. <laughs> it's a black cat in the Catskills. It's not like, uh, like the old Muncie, you know, when there were still some farms around there. A blackout was a blackout. It was, it was pitch dark. And, and we sat down for the Shabbos. I came home from Maidiv and we sat down for the Shabbos table. And of course, my wife's candles were burning, so it was an opportunity. You know, I told my children, finally we'll understand what the Chachamim actually had in mind. I imagine there were no candles here. We'll be sitting here in a miserable, miserable meal. So the fact that this candles saves the night. That was the whole takana of Shabbos, Shalom Bayis. The Gemara says in Shabbos, in the Raman Paskins Lalacha, that on Hanukkah, if you only have a candle of Shabbos or a candle of Hanukkah, because you only have money for one candle, so you have to buy Shabbos candles. Why? Because Shabbos candles is for Shalom Bayis. And Shalom Bayis is even more important than Pirsume Nissa than celebrating Hanukkah. 
It's a very powerful halacha. Right? In other words, Hanukkah represents the military victory of the Jewish people. Shalom Bayis represents that the house is peaceful. What do you think is more important? So the Chazal say Shalom Bayis is more important. Because the real victory on the battlefield is only significant if the domestic uh, electromagnetic field is as peaceful. Okay, how did I get into Neir Shabbos? I guess. Oh, that's because it's burning at night. <laughs> it's burning at night. But Shrage Betir, the middle of the day, not that it's not there. At another time, it would be amazing. It would be the source of joy and light and festivity. Simchas Beis Hashem, they had menorahs, candles, it illuminated Yerushalayim. But Betir or not, so the Alter Rebbe says, that's a pshat in the Medrash. That mitzah, the simch, the goodness and the bliss and the joy that's going to be after Mashiach's coming. So the joy and the bliss of the holidays, which are all joyous, mayadim l'simch, we says with some achta b'chagecha, it's going to be like a candle burning during midday. That's the word. Not that the mitzvah is going to be bottled. We're not mevatel a mitzvah. Chas v'shalom. Torah says letiyam achlefes. But the bliss, the luminescence, imagine you have a candle. In Golos, till Mashiach comes, the candle is gewaldic. <laughs> Pesach, Shavuos, Sukkot, it fills the Jewish soul with joy. It fills the Jewish home with gaiety. With, 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 uh, that's a word that's not used a lot anymore. You know that word? <laughs> but it's actually, it's actually pure English, forgive me. Yes. Yes. It fills the Jewish soul with a sense of, of lachluchias, of moist, of, of, of promise, and of, of celebration. That very same experience, when the sun comes out, it's still there. That's the, but it doesn't have that uh, intense impact. Mashaykin Simchas Purim, this is the Chiddush of Purim. That ki von shi simcha gdoyla b'yoyseti yechashuva gam lasid love. The power and the potency and the joy of Simcha is so intense that even when the sun comes out, it's not going to lose its radiance. It's not going to lose its, its pristine glory. So not that Purim is the only holiday that we will celebrate. It's the holiday that its potency, its relevance will be recognizable even in the messianic state of Geula in the time of Mashiach. If this is taka de pshat, that it's relative to the great festivity and joy of Mashiach, and that's the pshat that the mayadim, the holidays, will be nullified like the candle in midday. If this is taka de yisoid, then one need we need to understand what it's what the medrash continues. The medrash continues shalachad man da amar. There's one opinion in Chazal, It says in Parshas Achrei Mois about Yom Kippur, that this day should be Chukas Oilam, an eternal law, an eternal statue, an eternal Chukah. Chukah is like something engraved in the law of the people. So because it says by Yom Kippur, so there's an opinion there that Purim is not the only holiday won't be bottled. Yom Kippur too. But according to this, there's a question. The whole Yim, the Yim Kippur is of a different genre. Yim Kippur is a mitzvah to have five afflictions. It's called Chamish Inuyim. Right, like the Mishnah says in Yom Yom Kippur, Asur Ba'chiler Sia Rechitza Sicha Neilas Hasandel and Tashmash Amita. Yom Kippur is forbidden to eat and to drink. Rechitza is bathing and Sicha is anointing yourself with oil and putting on the shoes and Tashmash Amita relations. So it's a day. It's called Chamisha Inoyim, the five afflictions of Yom Kippur. The Mishnah is at the end of Yom, the eighth chapter. So it's not even in this. You don't say on Yom Kippur Mayadim LeSimcha VeSamachta BeChagecha. The basic staple of simcha, of eating and drinking, is, is not Yom Kippur. It's a whole different avoid. So it's l'chatchila not in the category, in the genre, in the, of, in, the, in the umbrella of holidays that are connected to simcha, to, to, to this flow of, of festivity and joy. So l'chatchila Yom Kippur is not among the mayadim that should be bottled. It's a whole different, it's a whole different type of yamtif. 
So why do you have to negate it and say, it doesn't say over there that uh, Shabbos, uh, the tefillin won't be bottle, other mitzvahs won't be bottle. Why should it be bottle by Mashiach? If this is the explanation, that it's mitzvah, the simcha, the simcha of Mashiach is going to be so powerful that it's going to eclipse the simcha of Yom Tif, the joy of Yom Tif, and put him not, I get it, fine. So then why, why how did Yom Kippur come into the whole, to the whole uh, cholent? With a machloikas. And one opinion says not. If Yom Kippur was a day of simcha, like a regular Yom Tif, that was its focus, then I understand. Then I understand. Is it like Purim, or is it like the other one? So there's a machloikas. But it's like Hatchil, a whole other union. The fact that it's brought in here seems that there seems to be something else, more than simcha. It's about the holidays, that the holidays essentially are going to be bottled. Maybe this is Taka what he's trying to say. Maybe that's Taka the word. <laughs> the guy is saying, yeah, remember, all the holidays are going to be bottled besides Purim, and remember, not Yom Kippur. <laughs> because we're not talking here about the holidays that are not connected to joy. The holidays that are connected to joy, those holidays are going to be bottled, what meaning? Because they're going to be like a candle in the daylight, except Purim. But take Yom Kippur, don't throw Yom Kippur into that, into that mix, because Yom Kippur has a different function, it was never about Simcha, so it's not going to be eclipsed by, by Mashiach Simcha, if it's about Simcha, so now you're going to compare this Chasana to this Chasana. <laughs> so you say, this Chasana was fine, but this is a Psach As they say, there's a Chasana to Gedenken, right? But you know, it's not, it's not a Chasana, it's a Chasana, this is a Pidin Aben, and it's a Chasana, what it was willst to. That's his, that's his kasha. Very gishmak. In other words, maybe that's what the Madrash is saying. You're asking, how does Yom Kippur come in here? That's what he's saying. Yom Kippur doesn't come in here. And that's why it's not going to get bottled because it's not about Simcha. So, so, you're asking a question. Maybe that's not what the Madrash is saying. But you can't say, Kimul Vadze, Shalpiza, Yitzarech, Lashmen, Agam, Benigel, Rosh Hashanah, Shalai, a bottle for Shane, Yenina Simcha. Shalai, the Simcha, Nit. First of all, then, he should have put in Rosh Hashanah also. Rosh Hashanah is also a holiday in Torah. We have Pesach, we have Shavuos, we have Sukkot, we have Yom Kippur. What about Rosh Hashanah? Add that too. Say Rosh Hashanah was not given as a day of Simcha. That's not the function of Rosh Hashanah. Even though we eat on Rosh Hashanah, we drink on Rosh Hashanah, it's called a Yom Tif. But it says on Rosh Hashanah, Loyle Simcha Nitin. It wasn't given for Simcha. Chazal says, it brings in the footnotes in 9. So you should add that too. Rosh Hashanah also won't be bottled. You know why? Because it's not a candle in the sun. It's not competing with joy. It's a different level. Another question. If this is the Vart, if this is the Chiddush, the reason why Yom Kippur won't be bottle, because it's not about Simcha, so it's not in... I'm using the word competing, I don't mean it literally, but it's not competing with Mashiach Simcha, right? Because it's not the union of Simcha. Pesach is competing, Shavuos is competing, they're all days of joy. So you're saying, relative to the joy of Mashiach, it's going to be like a candle. But Yom Kippur is not that union, if that's the Vart, and therefore, why shouldn't it be when Mashiach comes? Why should it be extinguished? We're not, we're not, we're not, just, we're not stopping davening when Mashiach comes, we're not stopping tzitzis, we're not stopping tefillin, we're not stopping mezuzah. They, they have their function, whatever it is. Just because the Simcha is going to be gewaldic, fine, so you'll put on tefillin with more Simcha. Why does he bring this Pasuk, Chukas Olam? That's not, it sounds like if not for Chukas Olam, right, Yom Kippur would have been obliterated, would have been nullified. But now we're saying, no, Yom Kippur is like any other mitzvah holiday. Why should it be nullified? We don't say, no mitzvah is nullified. All the title is going to be eternal. The fact that he brings a raya means he has to have a proof because essentially Yom Kippur should be nullified. Elamai, says says Olam. So besides one question, why don't you bring in Rosh Hashanah? The fact that he has to prove it from a Pasuk already means he's putting Yom Kippur into a different category. If not L'Chuk HaSoylam, you would have said that Yom Kippur might have been nullified. For you say to him, is a, there's an Amachloikas about Yom Kippur. Shanei Mashmo, is divrei aman dama redishin u shanaki mea putim einam ptelen. Avol yeh maki putim ye bottle. V'kivun shi maki putim einam yin asimcha. In the Medrash, there's two opinions. By Purim, there's no Machlaikas. Everybody says Purim is going to stay. By Yom Kippur, it sounds like according to the first opinion, it's only Purim. And then there's a second opinion, also Yom Kippur. According to the Zavite, it doesn't make sense. If Yom Kippur is not competing with the joy of Mashiach, it's its own mitzvah. So besides the question, you should have said Rosh Hashanah. Besides the question, you don't need the Pasuk Chukas Olam. There's a third question. Why is there then our argument? <laughs> Are they arguing about all the mitzvahs if they're going to be nullified? 
Are they arguing if Shaif is going to be nullified? No. So suddenly here, if you tell me Yom Kippur is about Simcha, so it's competing with Mashiach. So now the question is, is it like Purim? Is it not like Purim? But now you're telling me it's Bichlal not in that category. So something here is, is, is difficult to understand. The key, uh, what very good question. Yeah. Since Yim Kippur is not taken not an Indian of Simcha, and that's why there was no Hava Mina, that it should be bottle, and that's why you don't need Chuk and that's why there wouldn't be a Machlaikas, and that's why he doesn't say the Shoshana. So now you have to say that the main idea of the Moyadim, of the holidays, becoming nullified, it's not because there'll be so much bliss and joy that they're going to be eclipsed. Because if that's the case, Yom Kippur B'chlal would not fall into this whole issue as discussed. So you have to say, the reason that we say that the holidays are going to be like a candle burning in the light, it's because of the godly revelation when Mashiach comes. And that's taka the reason for the joy and the bliss of Lasid Lovey, because of the Gilu Yalakus. The revelation of Alakus, this is what's going to be explained. Here, the question is Yom Kippur or not. So it's not going to be nullified, it's going to be eclipsed. Yeah, eclipsed, not nullified. But what is it going to be eclipsed? Not just it's going to be so, it's going to be so lebedic, so simchedic. So the other holidays, the simch is not going to is going to be eclipsed, as you said. But there's an akudah here. There's a, a gilu elikus. The source of the joy is the, the, the divine revelation. That that that's and that you can say that that doesn't exclude Yom Kippur. If I can't, gilu elikus is connected to Yom Kippur. We'll see. For in you, the explanation in this is the inekola yonam shebegashmi is neshtal shlume yonam shebiruchnis. The big principle always in Kabbalah and Exodus is that everything in the material world is Nishtal Shalu. Nishtal shalu means it evolves, it develops from a higher spiritual state. In other words, every reality that exists in our tangible world exists also on a deeper level, but it's less tangible, it's less concrete. And that's what Mishtal Shalom means. Mishtal Shalom, the word Shal Shalas, right? There's a chain of evolution or devolution, to be more accurate, from the more sublime to the more concrete, from the transcendent to the material, from where a consciousness is pure consciousness to where consciousness assumes concretized reality to the point that we don't even see consciousness to something we call doimim which means dead, lifeless, quiet vayidoim, it's quiet the whole non-mineral inorganic part of our planet is called in, in, in philosophy doimim in, in ancient philosophy doimim that means the quiet, the dead, the lifeless it's not lifeless at all but meaning from the perception of the eye that is not microscopic, it seems doimim. So that's all behishtalshalus, the way energy descends until it's concretized. So there's nothing in the Gashmi that doesn't begin in the Ruchni. There's no such a thing. That is its existence. In other words, it's not like you need a raya for this. The definition of the Gashmi is a manifestation of the Ruchni in the Gashmi. It's the embodiment of a spiritual metaphysical energy. The godly particle exists in everything and constitutes the, the ultimate chemistry. So when we say that when Mashiach comes, it's going to be a good world. The Sugis and Gemara and the Midrashim about the bliss of Mashiach's coming. The end of Ksuvis is a whole arichis, how much goodness and joy there's going to be pushed physically. Even greater than by the time of the first base of Mikdash, when it says that the Jewish people under Shleima Melech, everyone lived, each man under his vineyard and under his fig tree, which represented ultimate serenity. Ishtachas Gafnai, 
Ishtachas you had your fig tree, I had my fig tree, I had my hammock, you had your hammock, you had your vine, and if in the middle of the hammock, if in the middle of the day you got hungry, you just stretched out your hand and you picked the fig and you made a bracha by the priya eats and you ate it. So even greater than the Ishtachas Gafni Ishtachas Tainasa, it is going to be much more. It's not Stam. The economy will be amazing and the tuition prices will go down and you, uh, the bank says, I'm going to cover your mortgage, I'm good. The word is, It begins with consciousness. <laughs> That's the insight. In other words, it's going to be a different world. It begins with spiritual bliss, spiritual joy. That's why the Baal Shem Tev says in a few places, Ein galus ela bedas ve ein geula ela bedas. Galus and geula don't begin with physical circumstances. They begin with das. It's a state of consciousness. What world I'm living in. We know a person could live physically in physical bliss, but internally miserable. I'm not going to say always, but sometimes, yeah. It's completely not a raya. You look at a certain a person's archava, it's completely not proof that internally the quality of their life is better. Sometimes it could be exact opposite. I'm not romanticizing poverty. I'm not doing that at all. Chas v'shalom, everybody should have a shiris ad, ad bli gvul. Huh? Yeah, no, we're not romanticizing poverty at all. But the point is that the external goodness, right, you could... Baruch Hashem, some people in Muncie have very large houses. You go into a large house, there's bedrooms galore, there's bathrooms galore, everyone has their own room. But there's a wall between people. And the wall between people I can't eliminate by adding another six bedrooms with an indoor pool, with an outdoor pool, with a jacuzzi, with a solar system, and with a tennis field. I mean, it's nice and it's geschmack and it's beautiful. But the internal misery that pervades the spiritual energy in the house, that ultimately makes it a place you want to be in, or you don't want to be in. And sometimes you can have a small house. In terms of Gashmi, is it small? But there's a love, there's trust, and there's nothing that can substitute that. Like Shleim HaMelech says in Mishle, right, it's better to eat uh, uh, vegetables, uh, <laughs> simple vegetables with somebody you love, than to eat fat and meat with your enemy. You know, I could be sit at a meal, it's the best, the best delicious food, every portion here is $600. The steak itself is, is $600 before the wine, right? But there's no chemistry. It's like nebach. And then you could sit, I don't know, was eating some kale and, 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 and spinach, which is anyway better. But you love being with the person. You love being with the person. It's a, it's, it's a different gashmi. The gashmi is different. So that's what he says. When you talk about the toiva and simcha of Mashiach, it's essentially, it's a state of consciousness. It's a state of ruchnis. The gashmi is just a manifestation the mass it's an embodiment of the ruchne vahinu shala asid li gilia la kuzba ifa naila bi yasa shala bad khlaida kama bi shwata ala fil ga bi gilia la kuz pran chu samikta shaya kaya va fil bi zaman ba isdish there's going to be a gilia la kuz a revelation of divine truth of divine consciousness in a way that is going to be beyond way and beyond not, you can't compare it to the revelation that's not only now but even in the time of the Beis Hamikdash, even in the first Beis Hamikdash, which was considered in spiritual gradation beyond the second. So when we say that the Mayadim are going to be bottled, it means that even though the time of the Beis Hamikdash they were so potent, it's not that they're going to be nullified. They're going to be eclipsed in the, the divine consciousness that's going to be revealed. So there's a certain gilu yalakos that happens Pesach Shavuot Sukkot. There's a certain, if the antenna, if my antennas are open, there's an energy that changes Pesach Shavuot Sukkot. There's a gilu yalakos. And because of that, it's mayadim l'simcha. The joy of a holiday is not we eat a lot of meat and we drink a lot of wine and let's be happy. That doesn't create simcha. Simcha in Gashmis only happens if it's mishtal shal from ruchni. If my eating is the source of simcha, we all know this, if my eating is the source of simcha, it's called addiction. I may not be an addict, I may be a binger, but it's the same nekud. Any source of simcha that's not a hishtal from ruchni is going to be short-lived, skin deep, and a very fast disappointment. It's like in a relationship, in a marriage, a relationship, where the relationship is only physical, 
No Bund says it doesn't have power. It has a lot of power, but it's going to be short-lived. It's going to be short-lived because it's not souls coming together. It's only bodies coming together. And the body without the soul ultimately is a vessel, but it's empty. And there's going to be a sense of, 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 of disappointment, of deep... Sometimes people have that. Sometimes, unfortunately, you have the two people, right? One doesn't realize that the entire connection is a physical connection. It's one of the sad mistakes of many women. You have that in the larger society very frequently. There's a connection. Somebody is very excited about the other person. They think the excitement is a very deep, spiritual, profound excitement. The excitement is really a physical experience. And when the physical experience is over, it's have a wonderful day. Baruch Shepetran. What last night? Biskiv Amishiga. You were Meshuga of him. Last night, Avada. <laughs> I was Meshuga. My goof was Meshuga. So every Indian in life, yeah, if the goof is not a Meshtalshalus from the Ruchni, you're, you're detaching Mayim al from Mayim Tachtonim, the lower water from the higher water, the Gashmi from the Ruchni. You're cutting off Meshtalshalus. You're cutting off There's no flow. I'm not in the flow. So when you speak about the Simcha of Yom Tif, the Simcha of Yom Tif will never be because we're going to have much more food and dessert. It's nice to have food and dessert and the kids get excited. But a person has to know, joy only comes from Gilei Alakus. What does it mean Gilei Alakus? Gilei Alakus means I tune into a place of deeper serenity in myself. My own infinity. It's much harder than eating steak. <laughs> And you think, if I have money, I'll buy another steak, I'll buy another steak, I'll buy another steak. So it's good. It's good for the first 10 minutes. Wow, this table is an amazing table. But the simcha of ma'adam la simcha is a shtalshalus from ruchnes. The gili alakus by Mashiach is going to be so powerful that it's going to eclipse the revelation of alakus of yamtif. And that's the vart of shraga betiya ramaya hani legabi yamtif. This means that Purim captures such an intense revelation of divine consciousness that even in the revelation of Alakus of Mashiach, Purim is going to hold its own, so to speak. <laughs> it's comparable. It's not becoming a candle that's eclipsed. There's something you touch, put in, that in the presence of complete gu'ula, awareness and consciousness, put in, is already tuned into that. Now we'll understand. For put in, everyone agrees. The Medrash, there's no argument. In Kippur, the Medrash brings two opinions. Either Yom Kippur will also be nullified, it'll also be eclipsed or not. One view is that Yom Kippur, like the other holidays, is going to be like a candle in the presence of sunlight. There is a view The second view is that even the revelation of Yom Kippur is going to be so profound, it is so profound, that it retains its intensity and relevance even when Mashiach comes. This is consistent with what it says in Tikkun Ezoya. Tikkun Ezoya is a section of the Zoya that explains the word Bereshus. It gives 70 interpretations to the word Bereshus. Bereshus has 70 different ways you could write out, the, you could say the word. Right? There's Bereshus, there's Bara Shis. He created the world through six. Just an example. So in Tikkun Ezoyer, he says there, Tikkun Chafalaf. And it's brought in Chassidus in many places. She Yoim HaKippurim Pirushay Gam Kippurim. Yoim HaKippurim is the day that is like Purim. Hainu Kemoy Purim B'chaf Ademyin. The Zoyar says that Purim is Nikra Hashem Yoim HaKippurim. Purim is a strange name because Purim means a lot. A goyrol, right? Like it says in the Megillah. Why did you name the whole holiday based on a lot that Haman threw? It doesn't seem to capture the story. So the Zoyer says, its real name is Al-Shem Yom HaKippurim. Yom Kippur is a main name in Chumash. Yom HaKippurim. The day of Kippurim, of Kapara, of forgiveness, of atonement. So Purim was named after Yom Kippur. But the Rebbe's Medayak here, so really the Alter Rebbe's Dik, really if you look at it, it goes deeper. Yom HaKippurim actually sounds like what? <laughs> Which is... Which is the source and what's compared to what? <laughs> so 
Purim is the noun, Purim. And Yom Ha Kippurim, or Yom Kippurim, which means Yom Kippurim, a day that is like Purim. <laughs> so basically, Yom Kippur is the runner up. <laughs> Purim is at the front, and then you, this is like Purim, which is very strange. Because Purim comes is Minatayra. Yom Kippurim is Minatayra. Purim is not Minatayra. Purim was added by the Nevi'im. The time of Mordechai and Esther, the end of the Nevi'im actually. At Mordechai, you had the Sanhedrin, then Chagai, Meshchai, Meshchai. The Gemara even says in Megillah, they, they, weren't, they weren't very enthusiastic about the holiday of Purim. The Gemara says in Megillah, they didn't want to write a Megillah, they didn't want a holiday. You know what they said? They told Esther that you're creating anti Semitism. <laughs> the Gemara says, Sina Atama Oyalano Beinom. You're writing a Sefer, Vos Vilstu. Let's sha, sha, sha. We won, they died, we won, let's go eat. Let's not make a Megillah. So what did Esther answer? The story is already written by them. They know the story. <laughs> it's written already in the chronicles of the Persian monarchy. What was Esther telling the Jewish people? <laughs> she was telling the Sanhedrin. <laughs> the Goyim know everything. That everyone said this over the Fabreng and put him Tom Shekhov Hazen. The Goyim Vesen Alts. Schreib the Megillah. Zolun Chach Yidin Wissen. The Goyim Vesen now, Zolun Chach Yidin Wissen. Let at least Jews know. The Goyim Vesen shine. <laughs> they don't have our Yetzirah. They're not stupid. They know everything. Zolun Chach the Yidin Wissen. Has that touch. So it wasn't so posh to add Purim. Esther fought. Kosvuni Ladeiris. Kavuni Ladeiris. She fought with everybody. <laughs> they said, You want to make a new Judaism? Esther was, uh, as they say, she was. She, she, she stood her ground. They said, you can't add. We're not adding a new part of Tanakh. You can't just do these things. It's just a hefkevelt. We're not, we're not reformers. We don't change Judaism when we want to change it because we want a new holiday. You know, then we'll also add Thanksgiving and then New Year's. I mean, what else do you want? Halloween? And they brought Psukim and Esther really stood her ground. And Lepoyal put him, becomes the great, the great, the greatest Yom Tif, Greater than Yom Kippur to the point that we're calling Yom Kippur Kippur. But here you already see from the Zoya the Zvart that Yom Kippurim Yom Kippur is like Purim. But Mele Velachen Yashdeir Shalei Yosei Rak Kippurim Bechafad Demyin Velai Purim Mama Shlachen Yibat Alasid Lover. V'Yashdeir Shakivin Shem Yom Kippurim Yashlei Demyin Lepurim Lachen Gam Yom Kippurim Leivat Alayla. So now we can understand better the two opinions since it's Kippurim but it's not Purim. So it's like a, you know the cup is half full or half empty, you know. You're like your brother, but you're not your brother. <laughs> what they tell you in yeshiva? You're like your father, but you're not your father. So Yom HaKippurim, on one hand you're saying you're Purim, but you're not Purim, you're like Purim. So that's why you right away you have two opinions. <laughs> From the name Kippurim, you have two opinions. One opinion is, it's Kippurim. So it's just like Purim. So the Gili Alakus of Purim will be so intense, Yom Kippur too. Another shit is, no, it's Kippurim, but obviously it's not Purim. So mainly Yom Kippur will be bottled. This is all an Indian in Zohar. But the Rebbe says, always used to say that everything in Kabbalah and Chesidus you could see in Nigla also. Because it's a Shtaushalus. I remember, everything is one. So if it's in one level, it's going to be on another level. So this Nikuda, that is a mile of Purim of Yom Kippur, First of all, that they're connected. And Purim is even higher, you see, even in Nigla, even in Allah. Where the Hine, Isabi Yuma, the Gemara says in Yuma, Shloisha Chaluke Kapoda. Rabbi Masi ben Kharaj says there's three different ways of receiving atonement for different transgressions. And he goes through if you do over on Mitzvah's essay, if you over on Mitzvah's license, if you over on serious, more heinous sins. He goes through the list. What do you have to do? Mitzvah's essay, you right away do Truva and it's. Mitzvah so you have to wait for Yom Kippur. Then there's serious avoidance of Kaddish, where the person needs refinement. You sit him in market. Then he says, yesh chilul Hashem ein kayach Hashem gam yem kippur, ak He says, but there's a chilul Hashem. Somebody publicly is mechal Hashem shamayim, desecrates all the truth of Hashem in the world. So tshuva doesn't have a power on its own. Yom Kippur doesn't even have a power on its own. The ultimate refinement comes after the soul leaves the world. That's the ultimate refinement. Because there's such a profound negative uh, impact that was created. In other words, Chilul Hashem, even Yom Kippur, 
is still Taylor. Taylor means it's still suspended, it's still in limbo. There's still needed a, a greater process. Sometimes a person can go through a tremendous journey of transformation, but still to clinch it, you need something else. So you see that Chiyam Kippur has limits. Not many, but when it comes to Chilul Hashem, the Gemara says it has limits. So, when you look at Purim, you see Purim, a power Yom Kippur didn't have. The whole Gzeda of Purim, Chazal say, Meseches Megillah is, they enjoyed the feast of that Russia. And it wasn't just non-kosher food. It was in, uh, perhaps that, but he used the Caleb of the Beis Hamikdash. It was a celebration of Churban Beis Hamikdash. It was a celebration that the Jewish story is over and there's a new story. And if you are dedicated to our vision, you will succeed. You even be invited to a Hashvedish's party and he's going to take a photo app with you. It was the death of Ga'in Yaakov, of Yiddish Shtoltz. That's what it was. Nenu Misudas Chazal, the, the, the Mepharshim Hazarim should have said, Achlu misudase. The problem is eating, they ate treif. So the Rebbe once said, no, it's not they ate. Maybe it's pikuach nefesh, the Cheshverish invites you. Nenu misudase shalosh sedasha. Mele, you're eating, what says the Hanah? This became the Hanah. We finally made it. A Cheshverish uh, agreed to take a selfie with me, and it's going to be on the front page of the New York Times. Can a Jew reach greater prominence? Can a Jew reach greater significance? That was the Chorban. That's the Chilol Hashem. And then there's a second opinion that they bow down to the Tzalem. So you have a Vedizara with Chilol Hashem. And it was all public. And what happened? Put him completely eliminated, completely atoned it. So you see in Nigla that put him has something Yom Kippur doesn't have. Sometimes you can atone for a sin. The Gemara says, Deliberate sins become like mistakes. Ah, uh, yeah. But then sometimes the Gemara says in Meseches Yuma, that's doinus, tshuva out of love, is doinus nasa like his zachis. This doinus themselves become mitzvahs. That's a chiddush. It's not just the sin, okay, you were in a bad mood, you, you didn't take your vitamins that day, you didn't have enough sleep, uh, you were shikha, you got intoxicated, you got overwhelmed. A lot of anti-Semitism, Achashverish invites you to a party, you got drunk and you lost it. Go fine. It's You realize your mistake. That's not the word. It's not so like Kizachius means the sin is a mitzvah. <laughs> the sin becomes your greatest moment. Well, well, relax. That's already a different level of tshuva. There's already a chiddush in the first way. Eliminating the sin. It's not so like Kizachius is already a gewaldige chiddush. But he says here the uftu is that it's not so Kizachius. Not only that there's no imprint from the chet. There's no roshim. There's no roshim is a residue. There's no roshim. Not even a chet b'shoigeh. In other words, completely. In other words, there's doinus nasalekish gagas, that's one level. It's a mistake. You slammed your door on my finger, it's still painful. But it was a mistake, I can forgive you. Then there is complete forgiveness. It's not even called a chet b'shege. Then there is a third level. It's a mitzvah. Nishapach <laughs> lezachis, doinus nasalekish is. It's not just that like it never happened. That itself is not bad. It never happened. No, it happened and it's a good thing that it happened because it's a mitzvah. The holy, that's why Purim is called Venapechu. It's a transformation. Transformation doesn't only mean there was a bad decree and it was nullified. That's not transformation. Transformation means, transformation means something is actually transformed into something else. Transformation is not obliteration. What happened on Purim was there was a Xer. Haman was a Hitler and instead of killing the Jews, he was killed. So he, the Xer was nullified. That's what happened. Something deeper happened. Venapechu means that the theme of Purim is that the very negative energy was transformed. In other words, Haman planned his own defeat because whatever he was trying to do just came back to him. So every step of the way, whatever he tried to do, right, 
Asheheichin loy. It says that he he prepared the eights for Mardechai. It says Asheheichin loy. Mardechai says loy loy la loy la haman. He prepared it for himself. Huh? Yeah. The Gemara has an expression, the mouth that prohibits is the mouth that permits. In La Halacha, if the whole source of prohibiting you came from your mouth, so then I have to trust your mouth consistently. So if you tell me, this and this happened, but this and this happened, the same man who created the Gzeda, created the Sud, created the problems, he's the same man who was transformed. What's that? Why is that so negaya and put him? That everything was transformed. The day that the Jewish people were supposed to be. Haman Arasha chose the month of Adar as the month of destruction. That month became the month of salvation. The day that was designated to obliterate the Jewish people was the day that the enemy was obliterated. Mardechai was supposed to be executed instead of Haman. Mardechai was supposed to be executed. Haman took his place. Every Nekudah was Venapichu. Haman planned to get the horse and go on a ride in Shushan and everything he planned, what happened? He planned it for Mardukai. He thought he's planning it for himself. He planned it for Mardukai. The tree, the gallows, he thought he was planning for Mardukai. He planned it for himself. In other words, every Nekud that came back, Venapicho. And like the Gemara said about Adir, he thought it's the month that Moshe died. It's the month that Moshe was born. So he took Yud Gimel because it's going to be a great day for destruction. That became the great day for Salah. Yeah. Venapich, yeah. So he says here a very powerful word. The reason this happened is because spiritually it happened. Because what happens on Purim is not the elimination of the sin, it's the transformation of sin. But Mela, politically, there was also a transformation. Militarily, there was also a transformation. The Venapich who began in the, in the avoid of Chuven, here you see the Mela of, of Purim even over Yom Kippur, Hashem. So even in Nigla, this comes out that they're both connected to Chuva. And yet, Purim has something Yom Kippur doesn't have, even in Allah. And that's, that's explains the, one of the main mitzvahs, there's four mitzvahs on Purim. And the big, one, of the, one of the mitzvahs is Suddhas Purim, Mishta Vesimcha, to have a feast and to celebrate Purim. Why did, why did Chazal make that mitzvah, Mishta Vesimcha? So, but Pashtus is because Esther caused the downfall of Haman in the middle of a Mishta, middle of a party. She made a party. There's a word from the Sfasemes, he says, it's also I think in other Sfarim, he says that really it's the Mishta Vachashvedish that you're celebrating. It's the Mishta Vachashvedish. The Megillah begins, the whole first chapter of the Megillah begins with a story that doesn't seem relevant. Chashvedish threw a party for 187 days. Talk about a feast. 187 days the man was parting. Huh? Fantastic, more than a half a year. You wonder if anybody had a job. I, I, I think the only kudu is because, uh, because of that full Hashem that they did by this Mishnah, without the establishment of Purim, there would not be a tikkun to do Mishalach Monas. Exactly, yeah. So, but if it would not be a tikkun to do uh, Purim, that it would not be a uh, like of Purim. That it would be exactly, that, uh, exactly, exactly. So, Asama says, I made it the Kavart. When did the big miracle of Purim happen? When did the real miracle happen? It's because the, it all happened because of Esther. How did Esther come into the to the to the palace? Because Vashti was executed. Why was Vashti executed? Vashti was executed because of that party when her husband was drunk, and he wanted she should show up the way he wanted her to show up, and she refused, and she rebelled against him. So he had her killed. So then he got into a depression. He needs a new wife, and that's when ultimately he chose Esther. Remember, it's just, Purim didn't happen within a half an hour like we think. <laughs> Purim, right, it took more than a decade. It took around 12 years. So it's a long story. You know, we have to, to Megillah puts it all together, but it didn't take 30, year, 30 minutes. It's a long, long story. So in that original party, when Vashti was executed, that laid the foundation for a tremendous miracle. What happened at that party? Nenu misudose shaloi serosha. As he says, Zachilul Hashem. So when was Hashem making the miracle for the Jewish people? <laughs> the miracle for the Jewish people that after 100, 187 days the Meshuggah and behaved. 187 days he was drunk, but he behaved. 
the last day by Yoy Mashvi, day 187, he got so smashed. Because every day he had to drink a little more. When you have addiction, every day was a little more. So day 187, he got so inebriated to the point to denigrate his wife and have her killed. Right? So 186 days, the Melech Tipish was fine. Day 187, he lost his marbles and he killed his wife and he goes into a depression. And that was what laid the foundation for the Nes Purim. And when did it happen? When the Jewish people were in such a lowly spiritual state. So what's the Havana? What's the, so the Chsam Seifer writes that that's taka the biggest miracle of Purim. <laughs> that even when Jews are in such a state, it's Bonem Atem Lashem Alekechem, and that's when Hashem prepared the whole Nes Purim. So that's why the first chapter is so important. That the relationship is an unconditional relationship. That's what the Chsam Seifer writes. A tired of art. it goes much deeper. Svasema says this. Twice in the whole Megillah does it say the word Hanim Tsayim. Twice in the whole Megillah. One, once is right in the beginning. And then after hundred At the end of one eighty days that he made a feast for all of his ministers and the entire palace, the royal servants. He made a seven-day feast. The whole nation that exists in Shushan. And that's where he really let everybody have whatever they want. All the decorations, all the drinks in the world. One more time it says the word Hanim Tzayim. Leich Knois, Esther told Mordechai. Leich Knois is Kola Yehudim. Hanim Tzayim B'Shushan. Hanim Tzayim B'Shushan. Why are these two Hanim Tzayim? So the, the Svasema says, this was all a tshuva for what happened at the Mishta. It was the Chilil Hashem. So Leich Knois is Kala Yudim, and instead of eating, what happens? They fasted. In this tshuva, it was Doinus Nasa Leikazachis. The sin becomes the mitzvah. It says, Matsasi David, the second, you have an Mtsayim also, Parshas Vayera. Go take your two daughters, Hanim Tsayis Be'ir. So the Medrash says, Matsasi David Avdi B'Shem and Kachi Meshachta, from that daughter came Moyov, came Rus, it was also Matsasi. When you find something, a Matsi, it's unexpected. So the Pshat is Azai. Once there was a Mitzvah, so it's Dainus Nasa like Azachias. So when did the Mitzvah happen? What's Pshat's Dainus Nasa like Azachias? Not that your sin is removed, it's transformed. Transformed means it's the best thing you ever did. Why is it the best thing you ever did? Because it's considered a Mitzvah. You don't regret it. How could you not regret a terrible mistake you did? So the pshat is, this is explained in Tanya, that the mistake, the, the crippling, debilitating effects crushed your ego and opened you up to such profound truth and growth that you could have never reached this growth without those terrible mistakes. So suddenly the mistake itself is the springboard and the catalyst for all of your maturity and truth and authenticity. The fuel behind all of your depth is your craziness, your insanity. So the insanity itself becomes a mitzvah. You don't have to try this at home. But if I go through this, fun this functionality, it's not that I come out on the other side like it never happened. No, don't say it never happened. It happened. And because it happened, I became the person I became. That's Pshat's Doinus Nasa Leikazachias. It all happened. It brought the Jewish people to a different state of consciousness. Once that happened, now the party, the original party, was the best thing they ever did. So how do you celebrate Purim? With a party. It's the Mishta Vachashvedish. But it goes one step deeper. Okay? When did Hashem create the miracle of Purim? At that party. What were they doing at that party? Chilul Hashem. But that's only from the perspective of time. But when you have the perspective of Zdoinus Nasa Leikazachias, 
So when Hashem was looking at that moment, what was He seeing? He wasn't seeing the disintegration of the Jewish people. He was seeing the ultimate rebuilding of the Jewish people. So of course He created the miracle of Purim then. In other words, if Zdainus, Nasa like Hizachias, so if you could experience right now the future, what you see in the downfall is not a downfall. What you see in the downfall is the genesis of transformation. It's a trampoline, yeah. So that's why, that's when he orchestrated the miracle of Purim. It just had to play itself out. Why is this so important? Because it's true in every person's life. Person goes through stuff. When I'm going through the stuff, it may be terribly, terribly difficult and challenging. But the whole kavan of it is v'napechu, to transform it. But when I'm in the darkness, I can't experience the transformation, I experience the darkness. But the way the, the, the way the infinity experiences the darkness is, it's the beginning of transformation. So it's not really dark. It's just the beginning of light. But in order for me to be able to come to that place, I have to experience the darkness. Because if I bypass it, I'm not going to be transforming it, I'm just going to be running away from it. And I have to be able to feel the pain of the darkness in order to grow from it. If I don't feel the pain of the darkness, I'm not growing from it. I'm bypassing it. So there's really a paradox happening. On one level, it's sin. And on another level, right now, it's a mitzvah. Which one is it? We're going to see. <laughs> when you do tshuva, this is the real vart. When you do... This is... Re- <laughs> I don't want to get too carried away here, but the big question of life if God knows everything, and God does everything, and Einoid Movadai, right? How am I sinning? And how is the Bechira? Yeah. So in Arba Meir Shekel Kesev, the Sefer of the Arizal, he says both are true. Both are true. In physics, the concept of parallel universes. It's parallel universes. On one universe, there's Bechira. I'm doing everything. On another universe, God is doing everything. Huh? I know, I know. Not only it's not proven, the idea of parallel universes was a way of trying to hold on to atheism with the brilliance of, of the universe. So uh, <laughs> I'm just mentioning the idea. Because <laughs> even ath- atheists don't argue with parallel universe because the only way they can explain how we have mazel, yeah? That one, in f- one followed by 60 zeros were the chances that the universe should emerge from the Big Bang. And it did with a planet. So in order to explain it, we have parallel universes that number in the beyond numbers that we can imagine. And all those universes are all completely mishuga, complete chaos. We're the, we're the crazy lucky ones, you know, from like 20 billion trillion sectillion cards. We're like the one card, you know, that, that made it. <laughs> so the theory of parallel universe is just a desperate attempt to uh, still hold on to atheism after the fine-tuning of the universe, the six constants and many other constants. Okay, but, but, but my nekudah is... This there was even bigger life, but still it's because so in order for him to explain the beginning universe, he has to say that one universe had to die in order for yeah. the universe to be created. Yeah. So this way, you know, yeah. eternal shtal I told you, somebody came to me and he said, uh, why, do you be- like, why aren't you an atheist? If you know, I mean, uh, you read, you read a little science, you should become an atheist. So I told him, he told me he's an atheist. <laughs> he comes from a Hasidic family because he became a very big atheist at 16 from three YouTube videos. He became an atheist and now he's already a convinced atheist. So I told them, I don't have enough emunah like you to be an atheist. <laughs> you need so much emunah to be an atheist. So, many, so, many, so much insanity had to happen. In, 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 not in seconds. In, in milli, 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 milli seconds. And not one thing that was crazy. In, in almost infinite crazy things had to happen to believe, to believe that I don't have such a Buddha, what should I tell you? I told him, <laughs> I don't, what, what should I do? I'm a skeptic, I'm cynical, I question things, and I say, whoa, 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 one second. No normal person in any other scenario, if God wasn't involved, would attribute this to chance. Nobody here. <laughs> All the seichel gets buried, so please. <laughs> he wasn't very impressed with my answer. <laughs> But uh, it doesn't take, it's true. <laughs> Especially today. A thousand years ago, they didn't know what a cell is. Today, today, not to, f- not to know that there's this, this consciousness behind the universe, it, it takes a lot of blind faith. A lot of blind faith. <laughs> and you don't have to study the whole cosmos. 
It's enough if you study one atom, if you study one cell, it's also enough. You could study one blade of grass, and, and it's enough. You could study one fruit, and it's enough. You don't have to study a lot. I'll call upon him. How did I get into this? All I know is when I talk about this, you have Tchir Samesim. I mentioned parallel universe, you wake up, and that's it. <laughs> ah, ah, very important. So it, it's both true, this parallel. So you say, how can a sin become a mitzvah? The pshat is like this. Okay, now this is deep stuff. There's two parallel realities happening the whole time. There's one dimension of reality that Hashem is creating every single moment. And everything is God's will. There's another parallel reality in which I'm choosing to do what I'm doing. And I can choose something that's very, very destructive. Do these two paths ever meet? That's what tshuva is. Tshuva doesn't create something new. Tshuva means that I, the two parallel universes converge. They're like going like this. Like, you know, two, two, two paths diverged in a forest. They're going like this. And then they move away as a little bit. So in the beginning, there's no big difference, right? But after a few days, right, you see, look, we're just starting like this. You're going a little right. I'm going just a little. But after a few days, what happens? This is what happens with couples. <laughs> You understand this is what it's about. You come into a house, you're supposed to, everybody's different, but you're, trying, you're supposed to go on the same azoi. And every night you meet up to make sure that you're still on the same line. That's why you have to talk at night or by day, whatever it is, or during lunch. But once in, the, once in a few hours you have to connect. If not, the husband starts going a little bit, just a little bit like this, and the wife is going like this. It starts off small stuff. Ez loif tzemincha, she's running to a shir, ez loif tzemaitiv. She's running to this, a life this, she's running to this, whatever it is, ruchnis, gashmis. And then, after like six months, one is in, you know, one is in Japan, <laughs> and the other one is in uh, South Africa. I was like, completely different. So the parallel universes, yeah, so, the avoid of a tzaddik, the avoid of teriyah mitzvahs is the two universes work together. My life is aligned with the Ratzin Hashem. What's sin? It's called Aveda. What does Aveda mean? Aveda means you move away, you pass over. In other words, I start drifting away from that alignment. I'm not aligned anymore with my source. Machtes HaShekel. The Maggit says, Asei Lechashtei Chatzoitzris Kesef. Chatzoitzris is Chatzoi Tzura. Asei Lechashtei Chatzoi Tzurais. Two half forms. One is Hashem, the other one is you, and the two come together. That's what a marriage is. Machtes HaShekel. So we walk together, and every few hours you have to say, you're in, it's called checking in. You know what checking in means? It's not checking in physically, it's checking in emotionally. Say, oh, I'm upset at you, I'm not upset at you, I trust you, I don't trust you. That's what it is. There's an element of alignment. We start, all Aveda means, I start drifting away, I lose that connection. So we shift, we go, 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 go away. What's tshuva? Tshuva is realignment, bringing it back together. What happens when I bring it back together? Something unbelievable. If it's real tshuva from love, from relationship, what happens? Retroactively, I'm now, I move my universe into your universe. So retroactively, what I did three years ago, what was it? It was Ratzon Hashem, so it was a mitzvah. As long as I didn't do tshuva, it's an Aveira. When I do tshuva, it's not a mitzvah now. Retroactively, my universe merges back into your universe where everything was the will of God. I, it was destructive. That's true, it was destructive. <laughs> In this universe where I chose, it was very destructive. So as Dainus Nasalei means, you go back into that place where retroactively, it's redefined. Not now you're doing good. What happened then was a mitzvah. And that's called Venapeichu. That's transformation. Transformation doesn't mean you're a good guy now. That's, it's true you're a good guy. It means that everything negative that you did, even if it was bemazed, becomes your greatest strength. How can it be your greatest strength? It's called a mitzvah. How can, how can you do that? That's heresy. The answer is because there's a level of depth and sensitivity and truth, authenticity and vulnerability that you only can have because of that break break that that moral disintegration that's the fact there's a certain when negative energy is transformed into positive energy it has an unparalleled intensity there's something that you bring to the table there's a there's a vulnerability a bittle or humility 
that only someone who faced adversity head on and saw and experienced pain viscerally, their relationships have an intensity and a maturity, hitbagrut, they have a, a, a maturity and an intensity that is unparalleled. The darkness itself created a different type of person. And you see it every day. You see it every day. People who had the courage to look at their darkness in the face and not be afraid, their authenticity is of a different nature. They change people, just one conversation changes people forever. Because there's an emes you can't, you, can't, you can't argue with it. You can't argue with it. It's like we spoke about chaya versus neshama. It's not, in, it's not intellect anymore. I see it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, you're not, they're not convincing anybody. They, they radiate it. They radiate it because they went to the lowest places and they, they brought it up. So Bemela, the mishta became the mitzvah. Hanim tzayim, hanim tzayim. If the mishta became the mitzvah, of course God created the miracle then. They weren't making a chil Hashem, they were making a kiddush Hashem. That's the chiddush of Purim. That's the chiddush of Purim, Lagabi Yim Kippur. So the Bemela, that's the venapeichu that you see even in Nigla, the mile of, the mile, the mile of Purim. That's why it came out in a way that everything was transformed. It's not that Haman was obliterated, or Achashvedish was obliterated, it's Apesha Osar, who Apesha hit it. She, did, she didn't have to do tshuva. She didn't have to do she was She was brought to the palace after. Okay, we're going to take a break here. Bezer Hashem will continue uh, uh, Thursday mornings. Uh, 7.45 should be fine, yeah? They'll be finished davening. They'll be finished davening. You could tell your wife so, or girls, my wife is giving a Tanya class today, 9.45. <laughs> on Linkrist, 49 Linkrist, and tomorrow we have a woman's share, 9.30 a.m. Everybody have a wonderful day. It's not long. 9.45 today, yeah. 20 minutes.